denotes the current state of the sport in bikes without brakes. To see it being run down the way it is now, it, it hurts me because uh, I used to love Speedway and uh, I lived for it and, uh, well, it's sad. I think a lot of the businesses are, are getting close to the wire. Uh, it's, it's desperate in some cases. We've got instances where directors themselves are having to lend money to keep these companies going. If it's success, they'll all say, oh, that was lucky, him getting that. But if it fails, they'll all be saying, well, what a silly idiot, you shouldn't have tried. That's life. And uh, like I say, I've always been a trier, always been a battler, and uh, I'm sure it will come through good in the end. screens in the 1970s, Speedway went into decline. The crowds drifted away, tracks closed down, and Speedway even struggled to survive. But now there is a new optimism. The sport has been reorganized, and many people in Speedway believe there is a bright future. Not everyone agrees, of course. So what is the truth about the boys who ride bikes without brakes? Saddlebow Stadium, Kings Lynn, home of the Kings Lynn Knights Speedway team. The stadium has seen better days, but its new owner has big plans. Right, this took the old area is coming out, brand new patio area, brand new windows viewing area behind there. Go through here, into the nightclub and the bar areas. As you go through here, as you can see, these walls are out, this will all be patioed. A massive area in here, absolutely massive. You can imagine a big viewing area. This will be the new bars, the nightclub area, the multi-function room. Across there, you've got the brand new car auction room that's going up there. Again, eating rooms there, like restaurant and everything else. Just gonna be superb. Can't wait to see it finished. Keith Chapman's business is plant hire, but his passion is Speedway. Buster, as he's known, claims to have spent half a million pounds on buying and rebuilding the Saddlebow Stadium. I've been following Speedway now for over 20 years. It's the best Speedway I've ever seen in that time. I think um, the league setup is absolutely perfect. Um, the way the teams are built, all equal riders. We're just getting tremendous racing. It's just been exceptional this year. And I think if we can continue in that vein, I, I think Speedway will grow and grow. I must think a lot of it because of the investment I've put into it and, and everything at risk I've put into it as well. Not everyone shares Chapman's optimism. We asked an accountant to examine the financial records of three of the region's clubs, Ipswich, Kings Lynn and Peterborough. And he found that the amount of money circulating in the sport is minimal. They are generally small businesses. I think that they are suffering in terms of getting people in through the door to watch, uh, to watch the activities. Financially, they're not strong, they're not big and uh, there seems to be an absence of interest from banks and other fund providers to put money into Speedway. All three clubs struggled to make a profit. 
They survive on crowds which average around 1,500. And the list of expenses is long. The future could be bleak. I think they need more fans coming in through the turnstiles. They certainly need a serious injection of finance, possibly from TV or some other sponsor. Without that, it's difficult to see how some of these local clubs are going to survive in the longer term. In the 50s, it was a different story. I like the place then. I like yeah, the that, was a, that was a tricky little one. Right. That was Billy's favourite, wasn't it? Yeah. That's where I really hurt myself. Is it? <laughs> Me again, I mean. <laughs> Somebody out there, shall we? Yeah, you lost him in that corner. He's got you in that corner. Oh, he's still there. Yeah, no, you're under him now. Yeah. Yeah. Push him a bit. Push him a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people there then. About 15, 16,000, I that suppose. That many? Yeah. Yeah, because it looks pretty. Yeah, full when, when the. It was seldom under 10,000, wasn't it? Yeah. When, when you just see the heads, you know, you've got a good crowd. When you used to see the shoulder and head, that used to be. Oh, yes. Oh, that oh, used to be a bit tell. lean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back in the 50s, the Norwich Stars attracted big crowds to the Furs Stadium. Fans paid just a shilling to watch the likes of Reg Trot and Billy Bales. But the brightest star of them all was a brilliant young rider from Sweden by the name of Ovi Fundin. Those days were the happiest days of my life, no doubt about it, and I was always so very happy here in Norwich, you know. Well, he was as good as he was, but he was a perfectionist for a start. And also, uh, he was brilliant in control. And uh, he, he got the best out of whatever you put under him. I lived for my speedway, and, uh, well, that was anything that mattered to me. That was a disaster if he lost a race. That was either my fault or the bike. <laughs> Ready for the Speedway battle at Wembley, Jack Young, Australia and Coventry, Harry Briggs, New Zealand and Newcross, and Ronnie Moore, New Zealand and Wimbledon. Over Fundin, Sweden and Norwich, Josef Hofmeister, West Germany, and Chum Taylor, England and Southampton. Just a few of the aces about to decide this year's champion of champions, and there was a packed house when the heat got going. What with the cheers of the fans and the roar of the bikes, it was as noisy as it was exciting. After 20 heats, reigning champion Ronnie Moore, Peter Craven, Bellevue in England, and Over Fundin each had 14 points out of 15. So it was Moore, Fundin, and Craven in the runoff. This was as big a thrill as any fan could want. And in the result, the flying Fundin, winner in 1956, just pipped Moore for the world title. Great riders, and to this year's greatest, the trophy was presented by Norman Wisdom. The lap of honor was rightly the signal for more roars of applause. There in, in the 50s and so, you know, the, uh, the sport was, was big and it was just before all the pop stars and all that and, and I guess we were kind of pop stars. It didn't last. Fundin won the individual world title five times, but back in Norwich, the first stadium was sold to a property developer. Crowds had dwindled and in 1964, houses were built on Fundin's favourite track. Coming down it was easy where the main gate was and all that. And I do think that the uh, grandstand was over here. And of course the workshops and such would have been further back. And the uh, final corner would have been roughly here somewhere. And then uh, came past the uh, grandstand and that, that where we had the uh, starting line, the finishing line of course. And then it, it, we came around like this. But this is, it is Roughly what I remember. It's so hard. I do think it was a little bit different. I think the racing was more interesting because uh, the tracks were rougher, they're harder to, to ride, and there were a bit more dirt on them, and there was much more passing. 
uh, which of course makes it more interesting. The sport hasn't really changed that much. I think um, there's never been any more overtaking than there is now. Certainly the sport's got quicker. And I think that sometimes the riders are more spread out because of that. I just think that, that maybe the guys on the, on the slower equipment row closer together and sometimes we have to leave a bigger uh, gap for errors. So uh, I think that's possibly the racing's not as close, but I don't think there's any less overtaking. As the speedway season draws to a close, the Ipswich Witches, led by England international Chris Louie, are at home against Kings Lynn. It's the quarter-finals of the new playoffs, and with the match to be decided over two legs, Louis wants to build up a big lead. It's a local derby, they're big anyway, but this is obviously the first time the playoffs have been been played for and uh, it's against our old, old rivals Kings Lynn so here in, in, in a league sense it's as big as they come. Speedway bikes have 500cc engines and do 0 to 60 in just three seconds and they don't have brakes. but he's, I'd say he's, he's cunning, you know, he, uh, he uh, follows the opposition for a lap, waves them up and uh, he foxes them and um, before they know it he's done his manoeuvre past them and they're still thinking where he is. It's a good night for Louis and the Witches. They will take a ten point advantage into the second leg at Saddlebow Road. Even the track man is in a mood to celebrate. Keep up straight, keep your balance. You left the pedal a bit harder, that's it. Oh, you're almost there now. Are they trees? As one of the world's top riders, Chris Louie earns close to £100,000 a year, but he travels the world to do it. Riders can earn a lot of money throughout the season, riding abroad, riding in, in different leagues um, and the World Championship rounds, but uh, it's the expenses that people don't really understand. Um, you know, just the travelling expenses alone can add up for a top rider over £20,000 easy. Um, the bikes are very expensive to run. I mean, they can be spending um, up to £30,000 a year on them easy, probably nearer 50. So, um, you know, that, that, it is the unseen side of the sport. If you're a footballer, you, you know, you might earn your £10,000 a week, but that's it, you have no more expenses. Even if you go and see the physio, it's the club physio, you know. If I go to town, I, I go and see a physio, I have to pay for that. But you can only take out of the sport what's there at the moment. You can't take any more. I mean, with sponsorship and, and more fans, obviously, I think the money will go up. Um, and that's the biggest problem, but I accept that, that you know, I'm a speedo rider and, and I take out all that I think I can. Um, so, I don't, you know, if I, if I was any good with a football, I'd probably have a go at that, <laughs> but I'm not. It's undoubtedly these fellows are brave and, and, and skilled, but a sport where after the first second and a half, which is about when they hit the corner, um, you can tell who's going to win the race. It seems to me has all the disadvantages of Grand Prix racing, i.e. you know who's going to win, and with none of the advantages, i.e. hot weather, um, a whole weekend of it, and uh, really, really attractive girls hanging about in the, in, in the pit lanes. Um, Speedway has none of those things, so that's one thing. I think it's boring. Total Sport is a magazine for all that is fashionable in sport. Speedway has never been featured. Modern Sport is about aggressive marketing. It's about 
gathering up a bigger and bigger portion of the national leisure time and leisure spend for yourselves. You've got to be on TV, you've got to be in the newspapers, you've got to be out there pushing yourselves forward. And it seems to me that, this, you know, if you take, even if you take football out of the equation, which is a huge thing descending on every other sport at the moment, take it out of the equation, and still, with it, uh, below that, you've got a competition among sports for people's time and money. And, and I don't think Speedway is at the races at all at the moment. I have a kind of, um, some kind of emotional investment in Speedway. I watched a lot of it on the television o over the years. Um, and I actually like the fact that these events go on in Britain w without, um, without all the hoopla that, is surrounded by, that surrounds modern sport. The parts of the country where Speedway happens, you know, East Anglia, places like that, they actually, I think, get a great charge at the fact that it's not on Sky and there's nobody trying to hype and there's no dancing girls. I think they actually quite like that. But uh, it's, it's a short-term future, I'm afraid, unless, unless they get themselves uh, even dirtier in the marketing battle. I can only see it going downhill. television killed a lot of it as regards people coming out in the evenings but I mean we've got a good crowd here now it's sad it's sad there's not so many people coming the people we have got here are hardcore they will come week in week out Chris Ellis has been watching the Ipswich Witches since 1959. She's secretary of a supporters club which has just 200 members. I don't think it will die. No way. Not while there are people like no, you around. Me. <laughs> no. Stadium. Hello, mate. All right. Uh, I'm going to make a decision at about 3, 3.30, because the weather's turned very bad. So um, it's looking doubtful. At Saddlebow, Buster Chapman is worried about the weather. Kings Lynn are due to meet Ipswich in the second leg of the playoff quarter-finals but the Saddlebow track is waterlogged. No. The meeting will have to be postponed. Tips for choice a good crowd there's a lot of local rivalry between us and uh obviously being the, the the shield match you know the playoffs and we'd already been down by 10 points i'd have come here thinking i was going to win easily and uh i think the match would have been good and it would have bought a lot of people Fifteen-year-old Ollie Allen is one of Speedway's future stars. Ollie started riding a motorbike at the age of five 
and is now a member of Peterborough's successful amateur league team. His dad, Dave, who rode for Bellevue and Peterborough in the 70s and 80s, provided encouragement, as did Ollie's hero, Chris Louie. I think it's just the thrill of the speed and everything that really gets you going. At 15, he's you know, an exceptional rider. That He's obviously got the advantage his father was a former rider, so it's taught him a lot. But the big thing that Ollie has got and the other 15-year-olds in the team have got is the right mental attitude, that they know they've got to work terribly hard if they're ever going to make it in Speedway. The Amateur League has been created this season to bring on young talent. With Ollie Allen playing a starring role, Peterborough have won the league title. The Amateur League is, well, it's, it's really good for British Speedway, I think, because you start off, you get to start off a year younger. I think you, you really learn a lot that year. I'm probably more optimistic now than I was, say, two years ago. But, um, yeah, I think a number of the moves that have been made over the last couple of years, such as the introduction of the Amateur League, um, will be beneficial to sport in the long term. Well, I hope I can go all the way. I'm going to... And have a go. My ambition is to be world champion, and hopefully one day I'll get there. Saddlebow Stadium, and a big crowd gathers for the postponed quarter-final second leg between the Kingsland Knights and the Ipswich Witches. With Chris Louie and former world champion Tony Rickardson, Ipswich lead by ten points from the first leg and expect to claim an aggregate victory. It's a big night for both clubs and for Buster Chapman. Speedway's my life. Most people I'm friendly with, um, most people I talk to, uh, most things I do revolves around Speedway. Some people might say, well, that's boring, but if you love the sport like I do, it's not boring, it's great. There's just one race left, and Kings Lynn only need Shane Parker to finish first or second to clinch a remarkable aggregate victory. Parker is in the red helmet. Kingslin have won, but Ipswich protest. They accuse Shane Parker of cheating. They think he's been using an engine which is too powerful and ask for it to be checked by officials. Buster Chapman is furious. Go and stand with a bike, sit on it so no one touches it. Go on. No, we don't want any accusations. Go on. If you don't bear the losers, come on, sit on it. Go and sit on the bike, let me check. One of you lot sit on the bikes so and no one touches it. 
Come on. Calm yourself down, man. Whoa, well, what f bad losers. Come on. John, go and sit on the bike, because we don't want anyone to touch me tamper with. Go and sit on it until you take the engine. Go on. No, I'm not going to Go and sit on it. I don't want to do that. Come on, we don't want to be accused of cheating afterwards. Come on. Well, you, you say we're cheating. I'm Back up your words. We are. You're saying the engine's big. Go and get it checked. No, Put your money where your mouth is and check it. I've done that. I've put my money where your mouth is. What, with the ref? Yep. Right, now take the engine. Go and sit with it now and take it. Go Buster on. launches a counter protest and it. orders the engines of Chris Louie and Tony Ricardson to be checked as well. Why sink to their level? We had a brilliant meeting. Yeah, Fair yeah, racing. Yeah. He's won more racing than anybody. But why sink to their level? Because I'm not going to let them get don't, away with it. Don't let... Don't sink to get their the level. Get the engine out. Don't sink to their get level. the engine out. Get the engine out now. Slow down. I want the engine out Slow now. Down. I want the engine out right now. Later, all the engines are found to be legal, but the row spoils a great night of racing. I think it's a good sport. I think, um, I think it is on its way back. Um, it has got problems, and uh, I think really that they need to be addressed very quickly. They always address the bikes as being the problem. I think really a lot of the time the tracks are the problem. Um, some of them aren't wide enough. Some of them just aren't prepared good enough. Um, if you don't feel confident to race, you can't race. I think they need to run perhaps on two to two days of the week only, maybe a Thursday and Saturday, and keep the league together so that when one club has done six, so has everybody else. Um, you can see who is heading the table truly that way, as, as the football do. Um, and they run Speedway in, in Sweden that way and Poland. And uh, I think it just needs to be a tighter ship in this country. Speedway's big hope for next season is that an elite league meeting will be shown every week on satellite television. TV is absolutely vital. I think it's vital to any professional sport that you know, you, I don't think you can carry on these days relying simply on attendances to provide the income that you need to pay the sort of wages that are being paid. As more and more stations come online with digital television, um, it's clear that every sport is going to have a slot. Um, you know, right down to cheese rolling, everything will be on television and something unexpected will hit. Something will click with the public and become a cult followed by actually, you know, a very popular sport for 5, 10, 15 years, whatever it's going to be. And there's no reason why that shouldn't be Speedway. I do love doing it, and I have an ambition, you know, to be the world's best rider, which um, I think anybody that, that rides Speedway, anybody that does any sport, I mean, that's got to be your ambition to be the best. So uh, that's what keeps me going. Everything that's worth having is hard to get, isn't it, and takes time. You, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, we all know that, and uh, Kings Lynn Speedway Super Stadium wasn't built and won't be built in a day or a year or two years. It'll take probably five years, I should think. If the gamble doesn't pay off, I suppose I can end up losing the house, I don't know. Um, but I never think it won't pay off. When I do things, I always think it will work. You've got to until the very end.